Welcome to Arkansas Wildlife. It's the final episode of our fall 2017 season, and we thank you so much for tuning in this week and all season long. We have another fantastic episode lined up for this season finale. People often talk about the healing power of the great outdoors, and this week we're gonna introduce you to a program called the Mayfly Project. The program started right here in the natural state and now is spreading throughout the country. It's introducing foster children to fly fishing, an activity they can carry on throughout their lives and also a way to briefly escape whatever troubles they may have. And a little later in the show, we're gonna be talking Christmas trees. Now here in a few days, it'll be time to take those trees down. And if you're anything like me, it's not my favorite part of Christmas. Removing the lights, the ornaments, and most especially, cleaning all those needles up off the floor. But this year, we're gonna look at it a little bit differently. We're gonna look at it as an opportunity to create great fish habitat in Arkansas bodies of water. All that, and this week's winner of a free hunting and fishing license, right after this break. Arkansas Wildlife is brought to you in part by Academy Sports and Outdoors. For all, for less. These days, there isn't much you can't do with your mobile phone. You can wake up with a cup of joe. You can take off on an epic adventure. You can also brag a little bit. Ah, woo! And now, you can even carry your Arkansas hunting and fishing license. Get yours today at agfc.com. Many use the outdoors as a way to clear their minds and find an inner peace. For Benton's Jess Westbrook, fly fishing provided that relief. My wife and I's um, son, first son was born three years ago and I started having panic attacks. And um, in those panic attacks, uh, I, I found that fly fishing was the only way that I was able to kind of escape from my worries or fears or anxieties. Uh, I've fly fished my entire life, but it's only been for the last three years that I've used fly fishing as a tool for, like a healing tool. A chance meeting at church changed the direction of his life. An organization uh, that works with foster kids came and they talked to our church and I, I kind of just felt called that this is something that I wanted to do. I've been looking for a way to give back through fly fishing and it just kind of all hit me at once that that's what I needed to do was, you know, mentor foster children through fly fishing. When this thing first started, it was it was just my wife and I, and that's all we were doing, was just taking kids and just having fun. We didn't have like a program or anything like that set up. But soon, the Mayfly Project was hatched. We were driving to my wife's Thanksgiving in 2015, and um, it hit me at Malvern. And I don't, I don't know why, I don't know, but it just, it was like the Mayfly Project. And you know, I told Laura and she was like, absolutely, that's it. In the world of fly fishing, the mayfly is an important food source for trout and the basis for countless popular fly patterns. Once they settled on a name, they hit the ground running. We got a logo designed by a fly fishing artist out of Pennsylvania and we put that to social media and it immediately just took off. And we found that there was a lot of interest, you know, in Arkansas and nationwide. And so we, we did a lot of thinking and we decided that, you know, this was something that we wanted to try to take nationwide. We, uh, we started working with a girl out of Idaho that is doing, was doing pretty much the same thing. I was starting my own thing in North Idaho um, when I saw the Mayfly Project logo on Facebook actually. And I asked Andrea Larco, uh, what it stood for and she gave me Jess's number and once I heard that he was starting a foster care uh, fly fishing group I just immediately we called each other and said I'm doing this and I'm doing this and I have a background working with foster children and mental health and um, so we've kind of collaborated through the last two years just developing a program that is universal that could be applied in any state. The sessions that we do, the five sessions are named after like the stages of a mayfly's life cycle so we, we tie it all together. So those five sessions will, you know, consist of anything from everything from casting to tying flies to conservation 
tying knots, everything they need to know to, to be able to, to go out on their own and fly fish. So our goal with them is, you know, um, when they leave the program, they actually know how to fly fish on their own, and we hope to prepare them to fish the waters around them. At the end of the program, we normally take them on a, a last outing or a final trip, kind of as a celebration for us, you know, as, as mentors and them as kids. The, on the fifth session, we give them everything they need to fly fish on their own. So we give them a rod, a pack, flies, tippet, leaders, everything they need to fly fish. So we give that to them at the end, so it's kind of like a celebratory congratulations, you know, you've done it. Their work caught the eye of Project Zero, a local organization that has one goal. And that's to have uh, zero kids waiting in foster care to be adopted. There are about 500 kids in foster care in Arkansas waiting to be adopted, and we are passionate about finding families for them. So when we learned about the Mayfly Project, we knew that that was something we wanted to get involved in. And so we have partnered with them to bring kids who are waiting to be adopted, and Jess brings in mentors, and it's just a beautiful thing to see the mentors pouring into the lives of our waiting kids. Our goal, obviously, is to help find families for these kids. Project Zero works with the Mayfly Project to produce videos designed to help foster children find permanent homes. So not all of our kids that we mentor are eligible for adoption, but those that are, we try to film and uh, share on social media and try to get those kids adopted. Um, in 2017, uh, we've done four videos so far of children, and we have three kids that have been adopted this year, and we have one that has been placed in a home to be adopted. We're finding these videos we're doing with Project Zero are actually helping, you know, we're, we're teaching the kids how to, to fish and hopefully provide them with an outlet to channel any, any kind of anxiety or anxiousness, but we're also, you know, helping some of these kids find forever homes. Coming up after the break, we'll head to Dry Run Creek in North Arkansas, where several young anglers from the Mayfly Project will be looking for some giant trout. Arkansas Wildlife is brought to you in part by the Arkansas Game and Fish Foundation. Support wildlife and conservation education in the natural state. Become a member today. Here at Dry Run Creek below Norfolk Dam, the Mayfly Project is holding a special one-day event, pairing foster kids with their fly fishing mentors. In this outing, we typically mentor kids from North Arkansas because we don't have a project up there. So uh, we work with Project Zero to find kids across the top of the state that we don't have access to and at least provide them that experience since we can't, since we don't have a project up there yet. So, you know, in that one day session, we, we walk through all the steps with the kids and, you know, hopefully get them on a fish. Before you can catch fish, you have to learn to assemble your rod. Then there's a quick casting lesson. All right, give the dog a drink. Lift the line out of the honey, back cast. Little Rock's Chris Morris is a Federation of Fly Fishers certified casting instructor, as well as a Mayfly Project mentor. Main thing is, um, as far as the casting, just how to throw 30 feet of fly line. That's as much as they'll ever need for the dry run. And a large part, tying the knots, tying flies, uh, getting them excited about what different flies to use based on the hatches that are going on and what the um, insect life is in dry run. The main thing is just to give them a good time, let them have some fun out here. The other casting instructor came all the way from Tennessee to lend a hand. Jessica Callahan is a disabled American veteran who turned to outdoors and fishing themed art after her injury. So I actually got involved in the Mayfly Project by donating one of my prints. I'm an artist and um, it started with that. Jess had asked me to donate to raise money. He told me all about the program and it kind of snowballed from there. I got really, really excited once he shared what the program was about, helping foster, mentoring fostering children um, and teaching them how to fly fish. And so from there, I became a mentor and that's what I'm here today to do. I'm here to teach the kids how to fly fish, spread the passion, encourage enthusiasm, just specifically be here for the kids. After learning the basics of fly casting, it was time to hit the water. So Dry Run Creek is amazing. It's an amazing fishery um, for our kids, and you know it's it's um, it's very well maintained. And 
Uh, the fish are obviously they're huge, uh, and you know it, it's it's small enough where if the kids can't cast very well, they can still catch a fish. For mentor Bobby Teague, giving back through fly fishing was a perfect fit based on his life experience. Fly fishing was a, was something that was able to help keep me in an area of. It was my happy place. It was where I went, where I felt no stress. It was just me, the water, my fly rod, and it didn't really matter if I caught fish or not. That was where I went to relieve stress and where I, I felt, didn't feel the pressures of the outside world. And I learned about the Mayfly Project. I learned about it online. I saw, I saw um, the Mayfly Project's post. I saw what they were doing. And I have a, I'm lucky enough to have a home on the White River, so I'm there about just about every weekend. I do a lot of fly fishing, and I thought, you know, what a wonderful, wonderful idea these guys have going. I want to get involved. So I immediately contacted Jess and said, how do I become a mentor with your organization? Mentors are paired with a single child and spend the entire day with them. That was a really special day for me. It, I had a young man, his name was Matthew. 12 years old, um, had, 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 been in, um, had been in the system, so to speak, um, removed from his, his, his parents at a young age and bounced around quite a bit. He, when we started off that day, he was really, really quiet. I thought, thought I got a really shy kid, he's not gonna say much. And he's still a little bit hesitant, doesn't really wanna open up, and you know, we get, I could see that he kept, he kept doing this, this certain thing with his rod and really, was really, really fast when he came forward and he, he kept slapping the water, and I kept telling him just to, you know, bring it back a little quicker and then just kinda, and then, you know, stop for just a second and slowly bring it forward. And I found that this, this child picked up on it so quickly. He was so easy to teach. And there's been so many adults that I've attempted to teach to, to fly fish how to cast. And they are so hard to work with because they have this innate feeling of, I know how to do this and I'm, I'm going to get it right off the bat. Well, these kids are malleable. And, and, just, and I don't say that in just the sense of fly fishing. They're sit there at an age where they're so impressionable and there's so much going on in their lives that for that piece of time that they can be on the river, they can find that, that peace and quiet and that place of non-worry and to where all of, their, all of their problems of where am I going to sleep tonight, am I going to get adopted, what's going to happen when I get back to the group home, those thoughts are gone and because I know when I'm out there with them, my thoughts of anything in the outside world are gone as well. Um, a lot of really special things transpired on this last trip with Matthew about, I guess we were about halfway through the day and he looked up and said, uh, Mr. Bobby, can I go home with you? I don't want to go back to the ranch. And I, and I, I choked up because he was dead serious and he wouldn't take his eyes off of me. And, you know, I choked up a little bit and I, you know, I kind of had to explain to him that I'm a single guy and that, that it would be tough for me to do that, but it, that for sure we could remain friends and we'd stay in touch. And we do to this day. He, he still writes me, we still talk. Um, I'm in contact with his counselor. I'm going to go see him here in a couple of weeks for an outing, um, which is a, kind of a big deal for him to earn. The project is creating lifelong memories for both the kids and the mentors. My favorite moments are when they actually hook into a fish. It doesn't matter the size of it, their enthusiasm, their excitement, the smiles on their face. Those are moments that I will never, ever forget. How excited they are, um, how scared they are to touch a fish for the, sometimes for the first time. It's just those moments that stick with you. Well, some of my favorite moments are just when the kids, um, they show up and they're nervous, like they're not that excited actually. They're just, they're glad to be outside though, but they're not quite sure what they're getting into. And so once you get them on their first fish, like it flips just like that and the smile, like you can't even explain the smile, like they're so excited. And then from that, after that, they just want to catch more fish. And that's the thing that I love is that they're just, they're in the moment, they're in nature, experiencing time outside and they're feeling good about themselves. But the number one thing is they don't, they're not thinking about foster care. Like they're not thinking about where they're gonna be in a couple weeks. They get to just focus on fishing. At the end of the deal, we have these kids outfitted completely to go fly fishing on their own. And if they can do that and find that pathway and find that healthy habit as their outlet, then they're, that, that takes off so much pressure for them to go the wrong way or pick up an unhealthy habit you know, drugs, alcohol, crime, anything else when they can go fly fishing. Like its namesake insect, the Mayfly Project has undergone a major transformation. Hatched from a simple idea, it has emerged as a force for good in the lives of foster children. It's taking wing across the country 
with big goals moving forward. We have, uh, I think, 60 mentors across the U.S. right now, and we have um, about 20 states that we're working on getting Mayfly projects going right now. So um, it's just it's just growing really fast. So it's been a whirlwind. It's just it's so awesome to see all these kids getting out in states across the U.S. So it really is a dream come true for me because that's been my vision too. Is to just get kids outside. We never anticipated this. This was just we were just taking kids fishing, you know, and. Um, you know, looking back on it, um, it's been a lot of work, and to just see even one kid adopted, I mean, it's worth every, every minute we've ever put into this thing. You know, we, we get that kid, and we, we take his mind off of his past for five minutes. That's worth it. Like, it, it's amazing to look back and see how far we've come, um, but it's definitely not just because of me, it's because of everybody else, it's because of Bobby, it's because of Caitlin, it's because of social media. I mean, everybody's, this has been a long road, but we've all put in a lot of hard work. Arkansas Wildlife is brought to you in part by Arkansas's own PK Grills, maker of the new PK360, the best and last grill you'll ever buy. It's that time of year when families all across the natural state are gathering around the old Christmas tree, ripping into gifts, and generally enjoying one another's company. But think about this. If you'll recycle that Christmas tree, you could have a gathering of crappie, bass, or bluegills around that same tree this spring. This time each year, the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission encourages Arkansans to give their Christmas trees a second life as fish habitat. Recycle that tree, not the artificial varieties, but only the natural trees, and turn it into fish habitat and a good fishing spot perhaps later this spring. If you want to take part in this tree recycling this year, all you've got to do is load the tree up and take it to one of the many drop-off locations around the state. You can see a complete list of those at our website, agfc.com. You can also visit one of those drop-off locations and pick up several trees to make a fish habitat. It's sort of like a take a penny, leave a penny situation at the convenience store. You can either drop off or pick up. It's usually best if you take the ornaments off. Of course, it'll probably be covered with fishing lures. It'll look like ornaments one of these days. Ho, 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 Santa Claus. We're gonna let you escape a watery grave. If you wanna create a fishing hotspot for yourself out of some of these Christmas trees, the process is simple. All you need first, of course, is a bundle of trees some kind of rope made out of nylon or another material that won't disintegrate quickly in the conditions of being underwater, and then a few cinder blocks, usually one or two blocks per tree. Now it usually works better if you use a bundle of three or four trees. One tree will lose its needles and some of those horizontal branches pretty quickly, so bundles of three, four, or even five or six trees are gonna last longer and create a better habitat for fish. You just tie the rope to the cinder blocks and then the other part around the lower branches of the tree or if you want to use a drill to make a hole in the tree and run that rope through it, you can do that as well. Take them out in your boat, find a spot that you like, a good spot to start with that you're just going to kind of sweeten by creating some of this habitat. Drop those into the water, let them sink. It's best if the trees stand vertically like normal and then just wait a few months, get back out there this spring, and you may have a fantastic new fishing spot. Merry Christmas, happy holidays, and good fishing to you. Arkansas Wildlife presents the Watch and Win Giveaway. During each episode of Arkansas Wildlife, we'll give away an Arkansas resident hunting and fishing license, a $35.50 value provided by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Visit the Arkansas Wildlife webpage at arkansaswildlife.com and click on the Watch and Win icon to enter. This week's winner is Billy Allstat from Cedarville. 
congratulations and thanks for watching.